I want to ask you a quick question about democracy, if that's all right. When does Trump become an illegitimate president? Donald Trump lost the popular vote by just under three million votes. Does that make him an illegitimate president? Donald Trump has exclusively staffed his offices of state with incompetent louts, with corrupt hacks, and with white nationalists, none of whom have the best interests of this company in their hearts. Does that make him an illegitimate president? The Trump administration has willfully and repeatedly acted in a manner that is harmful not just to the American people, but at the world at large. Look at how Betsy DeVos has treated the Education Department, how Rick Perry has treated the Energy Department. Look at what Jeff Sessions did while he was in charge of the D Justice Department. Does putting those people in charge make him an illegitimate president? The Trump administration has clearly, evidently, and repeatedly broken both federal and international law on numerous recorded instances. And I'm not just talking about the Russia stuff. Uh, the imprisoning of children is illegal according to international law. Does that make him an illegitimate president? I ask this, but the asking isn't really the point, because what you think probably isn't the point. You can't do anything about Donald Trump being the president. As of now, only Congress has the power to impeach the president. And that's a problem. Ostensibly, you're able to contact your representative, your senator, or your congressperson at your leisure. You can write them letters, you can send them emails, you can send them a singing telegram, I guess. But in practice, those things don't work. I've been involved with local campaigns. They have people who specifically vet emails and letters and even singing telegrams. I know, because I was one of those people. Really, the only way to be sure that your complaints have been heard is to see that representative of yours, your local, your state, your federal representative, in person and levy your concerns with them personally, face to face. And you might not be able to do that. You might not have the time. You might not be able to go to where they are. They might not schedule an event for you to come to, a public event that where you can levy complaints, where you can bring your concerns to them. And that's a problem with my representative in Congress, a unique piece of shit named Darren LaHood. He never schedules meetings. It pisses me off. But the wealthy, those people have access to our elected officials whenever they want because they give them money. You can see how this can be a problem. I would hope I don't have to explain how having wealth grants you not only greater access to wealth, but greater access to the lovers of power. And yet here we are. And to not be coy, the problem with wealthy people having more access to their representatives is the same problem with wealthy people having more access to stocks. Uh, they're able to pressure those people to give them more money in different ways, in tax breaks, and in financial incentives, and in just donations. And that means that they can use that money to get more money. It creates a centralization of wealth. Just like I was arguing the stocks do. And like before, this is not just me making an unsubstantiated claim. Uh, Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission explicitly states that money is speech and that speech cannot be infringed upon no matter how unfair it is. We have people in power right now, an entire party of people in fact, that are deliberately and willfully courting those affluent people to the exclusion of anyone else. They even have a former CEO billionaire as their party leader. Furthermore, those affluent people are enabling them to do that by giving those people that seek them out giant sums of money that they can use not just to make their own advertisements, to, but to attack people whom they're opposing. And while it would be remiss of me to claim that this doesn't happen on both sides, it would be equally remiss of me not to explain that this happens much more with the GOP. Things have gotten so bad that billionaires are just straightforwardly running for office and winning. And again, I don't just mean Trump. Uh, rich boy Rauner ran this state for four years, if you could call it running a state. And right now, the guy who's our governor, J.B. Pritzker, he's also a rich fuck. What has to be understood is that the rich and the powerful have their hands on the levers of power, almost exclusively. And we have to do something about that. 
You know, I think I'm gonna publish this one without music under it, just to see how it sounds. Not because I'm lazy or anything, I promise. Just so that we're perfectly clear, because I know that there are going to be some people who misunderstand this on purpose. I'm not trying to harangue on Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump is a symptom, not the problem. Uh, the problem, in fact, the thing that I'm talking about is that, you know, rich people are able to get more power by being rich. I mean, that's bad. Not a whole lot else to say on this one, I don't think. Next video is going to be the conclusion to this three-part series, and it is going to be about how politicians are just like corporations, and how we can fight both of them. Until we get there, take care of yourselves, alright?